What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. Now with this video, we are going to be jumping into some Hellions issue number 16. And if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on in this line. And in this issue, we are seeing the aftermath of everything that Sinister has been doing. Creating this new murder world. This is a location that he used to create his new cloning farm. After it's discovered, after everything is found out, the Hellions make their way here. With Tarn the Uncaring, everything going sideways. There was only one way to get out of this, and that was for Empath to overload Havoc. In doing this, we see the entire facility come crumbling down. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, we are picking up at Brooklyn, New York. And right now, the Hellions, they are scattered everywhere because Havoc just went nuclear. He went into his chaos mode and everything came crumbling down. The Murder World cloning facility has been brought to its knees. And the destruction of this facility, it has huge ramifications. Specifically for Psylocke. Because Sinister has been keeping her daughter here. Keeping her DNA here. Keeping it as hostage so he can use her as a puppet. And with this facility now being destroyed, any chance of finding or saving or resurrecting her daughter have been extinguished. And as all of our mutants slowly start to gain consciousness, you can tell everyone is livid. Grey Crow more specifically. Because he told Empath, if you were to ever do something like this again, that he was going to rip his freaking heart out. With Nanny being absolutely furious. She picks up a weapon and she walks over to Sinister and she is ready to just saw his head clean the heck off. With the clone Sinister being able to make his escape, Nanny is about ready to behead this Sinister, that is until the X-Men show up. With the X-Men coming to the rescue, that's what takes us back to Krakoa in the Healing Gardens. And right now the entire team of the Hellions are all trying to get themselves patched up. Now everybody doesn't really know what happened. Outside of the Hellions, they're the only ones that know the specific details on how all of this transpired. The only thing they truly know is that Alex is just extremely beat up. Not only that, but Psylocke seems to be hiding something. Her and Sinister working very closely together. They're thinking that it could be possible that Sinister is manipulating her or using her in some manner. And so Emma Frost wants Cyclops to talk to her one on one. And with Sinister being a council member, they can't really throw some cuffs on him and put him in solitary confinement. They need to keep up some kind of appearances. And so what they decide to do is to lock him in his room, at least for the time being, until they can figure out what can be done about him. But more than anything, what this is looking like, it looks like the Hellions have finally broken up. This is the straw that broke the camel's back. After everything that just happened, this team cannot agree, they can't even look at each other right now. Everybody is just absolutely devastated. More so over is because everybody knows what Psylocke just lost in this. And so we see each of the members head off in their own direction, going off to do their own thing. And with Psylocke heading out, she runs into Cyclops. And they have a conversation because right now, Psylocke is really believing that she's done with Krokoa, she's done with the Hellions, she's done with all of this. That she is going to go out there, she's going to meet death, and maybe one day it'll take her. She was hoping with the birth of her child, with the rebirth of her child, that she would be able to wash away her sins, that Krokoa would give her a new start, that this would be a new beginning for both of them. But that's simply not the case. Now with having no remnants of her daughter left over, no DNA strands, no way of bringing her back. And this was a council decision. To keep an eye on Sinister like this, Emma Frost ensured that Empath would do the right thing when needed be done. 
The only issue is it came at the cost of Psylocke's child. But she doesn't blame the council. While it was definitely their decision to enact all of this, at the end of the day, she holds herself responsible. She blames herself for everything that has transpired. And there's not much Cyclops can say to her to keep her here. Her mind is mostly made up at this point, and she's ready to go face the evil in the world and hope that one day, death comes knocking at her door. And that's what takes us to the White Palace. Emma Frost currently having a discussion with Havoc, letting him know that he's no longer part of the Hellions, that he doesn't have to work for them anymore, that he is now 100%. Of course, this is what he has wanted all along, but he didn't want it at the cost of Psylocke's daughter. He is really beating himself up right now. But Emma Frost goes a step further as a more or less thank you for what he did. Even though it is really empath triggering him, Emma Frost has asked that Madeline Pryor be resurrected. And with her saying goodbye to him, with him walking out of the room, this is where we see Empath come out from hiding. And of course, Emma Frost is going to congratulate him because he did exactly what he was needed to do. Exactly what Emma Frost wanted him to do. And he knows Grey Crow is out there wanting to murder him right now. Probably all of the Hellions are gunning for him. And so he wants to kind of hide out inside of the White Palace, at least for the time being, until things calm down, until people aren't going to be hunting for him. And so with Emma Frost making her leave, we see the empath he's been putting on a brave face this entire time. Because the reality of the situation is that Hellions are the only real friends that he has had. And Emma Frost just made him betray them, losing every friend that he could have. Now being completely alone and having nobody, Empath may put on a great facade, but at the end of the day, this man is truly alone. And we can see how much it actually affects him when he is sitting there by himself with only his own thoughts. We see the true sorrow inside of his eyes. Now, of course, Grey Crow, he's back and he is working, getting ready to go on the hunt of his life. Because he is going to bring down Empath. He told Empath not to do his tricks. He told him that if he ever put this team in danger again, that he was going to come for him. And now that time has come. But he's not just going to kill him in the sense that he can be resurrected. Once he kills Empath, he's going back to Cerebro. And he is going to wipe, melt down any backup there is of Empath. He is going to ensure that Empath never returns. And he doesn't care what the consequences are. Picking up with Nanny back on her ship. Picking up with this baby that she adopted. This completely synthetic green looking baby. She is sitting here, been raising it. Been taking care of, keeping an eye on it. But as she sits here in the ship playing with the baby. This is when the system goes online. And we see the good old Dr. Harold prior husband to Nanny, aka Eleanor. And what we have seen is Harold has been able to hack into the ship, to take, take control of everything, letting Nanny know that she belongs to the right, this ship belongs to the right, and that baby belongs to the right. And he is going to take everything from Nanny. And with the robotic arms inside the ship going haywire, starting to attack Nanny, separating her from the baby. We see the ship system start to go online. And we see the baby taken and put into the escape pod. Being put in that pod, it is jettisoned into space. We can only assume this is for the right to retrieve later. And this is going to have huge ramifications later on. Now that they have this baby back, they are going to be able to, to replicate it, to clone it, and continue on their work. But the Doctor has much deeper plans. Much more sinister plans. Because not only does he want that baby, he wants all the babies in the mutant orphanage. But he doesn't want to take them. He wants to take this ship and crash it directly into that orphanage. And with Nanny pinned down, having no other option, we see the defense system go online. We see the self-destruct system start operating. And Nanny, she is about to do exactly what she is supposed to do. She is supposed to take care of those babies. And by all means, she will ensure that happens. And with the press of a button, 
the entire ship detonates. And with the ship going up in flames, Orphan Maker running over trying to ensure that Nanny is still alive. With Nanny standing up, Nanny just beats the crap out of Orphan Maker. Previously telling Orphan Maker to get away from me, but now asking why weren't you here? Why weren't you here faster to help me save that baby and do what you're supposed to be doing? And slapping Orphan Maker around just a little bit more, saying that he's no longer a child, that he's a man, and he needs to start acting like it. Orphan Maker running off, this could have some huge ramifications. Because Nanny has been physically and mentally abusing Orphan Maker for quite some time. Orphan Maker literally just wanting someone to look up to, to love, to cherish, to hold, and to care for them. A mother figure. But in Nanny's sorrows... She may have very well broken Orphan Maker. And now, she has no idea what he is about to do. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I think this was a really great issue. We're seeing the aftermath of Sinister finally making this team break. Taking this team to that edge and just pushing them over. And every one of them has broken. From Empath to Nanny, we're seeing each one of the team members having such a hard time trying to figure out what to do next. Now that the Hellions have essentially broken up, each of them going in their own directions, we can only assume that Chaos will soon be engulfing all of Krakoa now that they are all on the warpath. And the most dangerous of them all being Orphan Maker. When it comes to the writing, I feel like this one was really on point. You really did feel the emotion, the trauma that they're going through. Seeing the, the, the sorrow inside of Empath's eyes. Understanding how broken Havoc is. How broken Psylocke is. How angry Grey Crow is. This comic did an amazing job of, of really highlighting how these characters react to trauma. How they handle it, how they deal with it, and how they try to cope with it. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.